Finally, cutting some video on a guitar. This is Harley Benton SC-450 P90, because the P90 pickups. Kind of dig this guitar, except I've got reasons not to dig it. It was some shitty fret work that it was sent out with. And uh, I was, and a few other things that I'll detail. But uh, overall, I'm fairly happy with it. Let me grab a, a neck brace here. There we go. knock the tension out all the strings you got a power tuner here somewhere actually an attachment to hook to my to my drill but uh, I really don't care to deal with that That right there might freak some people out. Why, I don't know. I guess they don't know much about guitars. Uh, generally, the wood is stronger than you think. And if something does go out of shape, because it has built-in adjustments, e.g. the truss rod, you can get it back into shape. Ain't no big thing. People always panic. Oh, you gotta do it one string at a time. Seriously, do you think that's how it was built? Nah. Wrong, wrong, and wrong on all counts. Anyways, uh, junk strings. Instead of just throwing them in the trash so they fly everywhere, I wrap them up. Keep a nice compact little thing because if you've ever gotten poked by one of these things in the face, which I have, once in the corner of my eye, thank God it didn't put my eye out, you don't want to get poked by a string in the face. Um, oops. Part of my uh, lighting here is uh, hanging by this cord. This is all very makeshift right now. But I really, really, really just want to get a video out for the few people that are subscribed to this channel. Because I've been promising for I don't know how long. Probably a lot longer than I think it's been. Because uh, now that I'm pushing 60, time, for some reason... <laughs> takes a completely different meaning somehow. Okay, anyhow. Uh, some stuff about this guitar. There's a little bit of weight to this uh, tail stop. Oops, that's loose. That's loose. Okay, both the, uh, the, the sets for the uh, tail piece are loose. This is the first time I've ever had this part. This, uh, mm, I'm going to say like an, a Nashville style because it's uh, slotted on top. It doesn't have the uh, little screws. I'm betting that underneath those uh, set screws is a, an insert that's going on there. Uh... Want to tear apart some of this stuff. Now, this this screw right here in the pit guard, it's oversized. Why they shipped it with this, I have no idea. But it's a size or two too big. You can actually, you run into it. Run down the fingernail on your pit guard. Yeah, it's too big. Going to get a smaller screw for that. 
Let me get some tools here. One of the first things I'm taking off here. Oop, that's too small. That's pretty good size, but that's not the one I want to take off. Go back to the smaller one. I want to take this pick guard off totally. And I should get, there we go. Got myself a little screw pan. And the side screw, which appears to be all of a number three Phillips. Now, if this were vintage correct gold top, these would be straight head, I'm pretty sure. Not absolute, but I'm pretty sure that they were still using uh, straight head screws. As you can tell, there's a bunch of dust and dirt. Because I played this a whole bunch. It had very high action. Actually, I should have measured it before I took off. Very high action. I'm guessing probably 9 to 11 64s. Uh, very high. And the, the flat tops of a lot of these frets are telling that they pushed this thing out probably off the assembly line when it got to finishing within probably 15 or 20 minutes. I think that it might have had a bit of a back bow. And they just ran a flat file on it. And threw strings on it. Nothing here feels polished. And many frets right around mid fret are actually flat top. And, you know, I played it for, God, probably several months. Kicking back in bed, playing till two or three in the morning, just exercising my fingers and uh, getting back into the whole gu guitar gig. But uh, yeah, this thing needs a whole bunch of setup going on. Throwing that stuff in the tub. As you can guess, none of the stuff on this guitar is branded ABR. Is it ABR? Uh, whatever the the company that uh, that does the uh, the the Gibson the Gibson plating. Get a little bigger screwdriver here. Dang, <laughs> those are some tough things to get out. And until we do that, let's get some measurements. Break out the old digital calipers here. And I keep the battery out of it because the dang thing will not shut off completely and wear out batteries left and right.
Okay, working on zeroing things here. Inches, millimeters, millimeters, inches. All zeroed. Okay. <laughs> what we're seeing for width at the nut. One point I can't be right. Oh, I can't see the dot. Yeah. Okay. At the nut. One point one point seven. At the nut, at the twelfth, two point one five at the twelfth fret. Should put that door on correctly in the first place. What we're seeing for thickness. Top. Uh, we're done the width. Okay. Neck at the nut is uh, zero point. Eight five eight inches and at the twelfth fret it is zero point eight nine inches. And it went back to zero, so that thing is apparently working. Okay. <laughs> what else do you want to know? Oh Contour. I got a box with tools in here for that. That's the neck. And that's the 12th fret. Could have probably done them closer together, but uh, on the left, that's the neck, and that's the 12th fret. Okay. Bear with me, working through this. Haven't really done this much before. Well, not any before. <laughs> okay. What else is needed to know about this guitar? Get the uh, caliper out of here and the battery out of it. And I gotta reiterate, I'm so happy that the uh, T2I decided to come back to life. 
couldn't get the uh, the lens to work for uh, this filming angle. <sighs> didn't work with it much. Quite frankly, I didn't try that much, but uh, the phone seems to be doing just a fine job. Now, let's uh, let's get the back covers off first. Then we'll flip this thing over and uh, take a look at the back of the pickups to see if the Roswell Alien Aircraft Pickup Company from China or wherever the hell they are. I have actually no idea. I'm assuming it's China. Because I'm pretty damn sure this whole guitar came from China. And uh, nothing against China. Except their communist government. The people in China, I'm sure, are just dandy folks. Would love to uh, party with those folks any day. Yeah, the government of China... I've got a big bitch with. Because they are terrible on human rights. Now one of the things that I noticed when I got this guitar was that uh, the uh, the routing depth for this, cow this cover is just wrong. It's the 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 cover sticks up on this side and it's down on this side. Uh, the the pickup switch not too bad. Can live with that. Come on, get out of here. go yeah it's a little snug I was expecting to see the uh, whatever they are 10 millimeter pots which we're seeing don't know the brand gotta grab a flashlight Hep, hepka, something. Anyhow, that's the inside cavity of a 2019 uh, 450SC or SC450. And, uh, the, uh, the switch got to pick up the, uh, camera for that. And some inexpensive phenolic uh, 
fiberglass, plastic, whatever the hell it is. Not like you'd find in a lot of higher end units, but hell, this guitar was at the time, I think, $140, $150 before shipping in case. Bottom line, uh, this guitar and uh, a uh, 52 Tele, quote unquote, clone, um, with a case for each. Uh, the Tele has a tweed case. This one's got a uh, injected plastic case. Uh, the whole thing came from Germany for. Uh, just over $400 for two guitars and two cases. Um, not complaining about a thing. Not complaining. Not, not, not complaining. Yeah, good little guitar. Yes, good little guitar. Yes, I'll fix you up, baby. Not complaining about a thing. Um, just pointing out what I have found from this, I believe that I ordered in May, I got them in June or July. They were back ordered at the time. Um, the, uh, move the camera around a little bit. Gonna have to do some editing here. There we go. Um, and, uh, I think there were a lot of orders going out because there were a bunch of YouTube videos of people getting Harley Benton Les Paul style guitars. And saying they were the most awesome thing ever. I think that's what, uh, drove the demand. Come on. Unfortunately, they use cheap screws that aren't exactly the right size. Got a number two Phillips in here. And these screws are causing it. They're either too soft or the wrong size. But they're causing the screws to slip. At least some of them. At least on that one. That one came out actually frighteningly easy. Oh, that one too. Okay, there's something is interesting going on here. I'm guessing that there's some hardwood or a knot or something. The body on this uh, on this uh, Paul is Paul wannabe. I hate calling it a Paul. It's basswood and a maple neck. Now that's in my book. Always a good combination. Hell, I got a, a an Ibanez RG. Been sitting around for probably a decade that I got to drag out here on the bench. That is basswood and maple. Works fine. Sounds good. People talk about tone wood. Yeah, well, they really should start trying to understand what the hell they're talking about. You know, the first Telecasters, the no-casters or broadcasters or whatever the hell, I think it was broadcasters before ooh, somebody, Gretsch or Rickenbacker or somebody uh, brought a suit against Fender for uh, using that name because they had 
Oh god, they're like glued in. Now it's just the foam. Yeah. Great, I pulled the cover off. Well, that's good. Can see what's underneath the cover. Uh anyhow, that's when they went to 52, I think it was, when they came out with the No, it was before that. I forget. Look it up. Um Five Watt World has a lot of good, good, good history of the guitars and amps that will give you a lot of information. I've watched so many that I just don't know what's right anymore. Okay. So there's one. There's a cover of another. And there's another. The only thing that we see inside of here is someone put the number two in black and I'll be dang. It looks like there's a semi long tenon. Look, the tenon from the neck goes clear halfway through the, the neck here. Kind of halfway impressed with that. Anyways, no idea what the 2 or the C stands for. Maybe 2 second pickup. I don't know. No idea what uh, what they do there. But uh, there's not a lot of fraying. The router works. Seems like they uh, they had their, uh, their pin router or their CNC machine bit. Uh, fairly sharp. Not seeing a lot of raggedy shit. Hell, I see a lot of raggedy shit in uh, fairly high-end Fenders and Gibsons and whatnot. I'm actually kind of halfway impressed here. It's really clean a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Anyhow... I hope that that all comes out on video. You know, pan out and pan in. <clears throat> See how close I can get. Yeah. I'm just handling a, a Gobi tripod with the phone stuck to it. Nothing fancy on photography, obviously. But uh, sticking this thing back down on the bench putting it where the marks on the wood are. And uh, that's about all I've got for right now. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, one of my gripes too was, check this, uh, this out. Yeah, you hear that? Yeah, that switch, it's funky. Shouldn't have shipped out like that. Came like that the day that I got it. Wobbly around and yeah, piece of crap switch. Now, let me see. Let me see if I can get some of the flatness. Of these strings. I don't know if you're seeing this. But that one's got a flat top, flat top, flat top, flat top. Yep, kind of round, 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 round. But right around mid-neck. It's like they had a back bow on the neck. Never checked it before running the flat file on it. Up here, yep, up here at the 15th fret. There's some flat and some grungy edge on that. Yep, 16, 17. Starts getting round again. 19, 21. Yeah. Good part of the middle of the neck is not very nice. Which is sad. You know, you'd think, 
you'd think that they would at least crown the frickin' the thing before sending it out. But, you know, sometimes, especially during a, a selling spree, you just get what you get. And like I said, for 150 bucks, <laughs> the pickups sound pretty solid. Haven't played them into a really good amp. I've played them through. I've got a uh, 07 or 06, 05, I don't know, somewhere around there. It's a, a Line 6 Spider 2 solid state modeling amp. And I can make it sound good through that. And hell, I kick back in bed until 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Just making making good noise out of this thing. We'll see what goes on from here on out. Another thing I want to check on this video before we stop. I want to check the straightness. There we go. Now, where's my flashlight? Okay. Got... Actually, kind of varying. I mean, there's... There's now some... Proper back bow. Actually, too much. Good God. At some points, yeah, up way past where it meets the body, there's a huge amount. I'm going to have to mess with this truss rod. Probably let the whole thing relax, and hopefully they installed the truss, log because, truss rod correctly, because I'm seeing... A little bit of gap at the third fret, next to nothing at the fourth, some at the fifth, a little bit at the sixth, seventh I've got some, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth a huge amount, fourteenth huge amount, fifteenth huge amount, sixteenth huge amount, seventeenth huge amount. 18th, good size amount. And then it tapers off a little bit, and then nothing. <sighs> Seems to me like this thing was forced quickly out the door. I might just go ahead and release all the tension on this thing and let it sit out in this humid area and let the wood kind of freaking relax and try to find its center. Good Lord. That is no gentle scoop. Yeah, there's all kinds of weird shit going on here. But, uh, eh, we'll make it right. One way or another, I'm not looking to do a quick job out of this so I can make a buck. Just trying to make this uh, a better guitar than it showed up from UPS. Get rid of some of the solder shards in here too. So, I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and uh, loosen the truss rod some. Let this neck relax. Leave it here in the garage for a few days. <sighs> Let it try to find its center again. 
and uh, we'll readdress this maybe over the weekend. Today is, mm, I believe, Wednesday the 19th. Uh, let me check that. Indeed, Wednesday the 19th. Uh, we'll let this sit for two days out here in the garage. Uh, let it find some moisture again and see if the wood straightens itself out some. I'm going to pull the... As a matter of fact, I should probably make that first priority. Uh, make sure that uh, the truss rod... This is the smallest I've got in this style. Shit. Uh, I've got some other screwdrivers here. Let's see if this does any better. Good God. <sighs> Shit. Stupid thing like a truss rod cover. Nope. God damn it. Gotta rework the wiring for the lighting. That's for damn sure. This just ain't right. I think I need to get some better screws that are properly sized because they're using screws that are not properly sized. Yeah, I'm glad to see that there's some very hard wood. Yep. Yeah. 
Clients putting out inexpensive guitars, one of the first places that they will cut cost is in their fasteners. Because they deal with they deal with them once. Get it out the door. They did their job. It's sold. That one came out 45 degrees. Just not right at all. Throughout the life of the guitar, things like adjusting the truss rod. God damn it. Uh, that kind of task may go on and on for a while, depending on the climate, humidity, if the owner of the guitar moves, say from Arizona to, to East Texas, the uh, ambient humidity and temperature if they move from like the Phoenix area the temperature will probably ambiently go down but the humidity most assuredly is going to at least double or triple now that damn screw, the hardest thing that I have done so far on this guitar is getting that stupid thing off. And I don't know if you can see, the inside of that screw is kind of foobard. I'm ordering up some good quality stainless steel screws. Stainless steel Phillips head wood screws to put this thing back together. <laughs> Anyhow, that's kind of a joke. Kind of a joke. Okay. Can't even find the adjusting nut because they never cleared the hole on this thing. I'm going to cut some of that wood back and uh, back off the tension on that neck and let it try to find its center. Probably go about a half a turn and see where it goes from there. This is more involved than I thought it was going to be. But that's okay. That's just dandy. Let's see if... No idea where that... I still can't find the nut on that truss rod. Well, let's see. If the uh, Allen wrench they sent... actually works on anything. Oh, damn. Got some picks in there that 
Uh, yeah, I got a bunch of picks that I'd like to use. And there is no Allen wrench. No idea. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of Allen wrenches somewhere in here. Uh, yep. Here they is. Let's see if they go metric or not. Let's try a Five, maybe. 